Physical Computing Friends, I'm Professor John Gallagher, and in this Raspberry Pi School tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can add a port for connecting STEMIQT or Quick devices to a Raspberry Pi. So let's learn big! Now, if you're not familiar with STEMIQT or Quick, these are fairly interchangeable standards for connecting I2C devices such as sensors or other add-ons. The connectors are standard. You see four colored wires, but they're connected to a standard plug, and STEMIQT devices can be daisy-chained together, so all you need is a single port. There are a ton of devices available and more coming out all the time, so Adafruit seems to be creating a STEMIQT breakout board for all of their I2C devices. Do a search for STEMIQT breakout on the Adafruit site, and you'll see page after page of add-ons for sensors, buttons, relays, cameras, displays, and so much more. Now there are more and more microcontrollers coming out with STEMI QT ports built in. Here's a microcontroller in the ultra small Cutie Pie format, and even that has a STEMI QT port. And when I plug one of these breakouts into the microcontroller, all of them get power from this single port. I've got a 12 pad capacitive touch board, a temperature sensor, a proximity gesture and color sensor, and even a small display. I'm just using this single port and no breadboarding is needed. And if your STEMI QT breakout has two ports on it like most of these do, it doesn't matter which port you use. Now you might see two names for this standard. SparkFun came up with a standard and called it Quick QWIIC. They offered it as an open source standard, so Adafruit adapted it and extended it to use both 3.3 volt and 5 volt devices. Quick is just 3.3 volt. Adafruit calls their minor variation Stemma QT, but the cabling is the same, and you should be able to plug any Quick device into Stemma QT. Now one very important note. Adafruit also has a standard called Stemma without the QT, which requires a different cabling format. Also confusing, some but not all Stemma devices can be connected to Stemma QT with an adapter cable. Now if you ever need to work with a plain Stemma format, Adafruit has a page describing the differences between these formats. Just make sure that if you want to work with Quick or Stemma QT, that you're ordering Stemma QT components and adapters. On more than one occasion, I've ordered something for the Stemma format when I really wanted Stemma QT. Now, while there are a growing number of boards that have STEMI QT ports built into them, the current Raspberry Pi boards unfortunately do not. But fear not, it's super easy and fairly inexpensive to add STEMI QT to a Raspberry Pi, and you've got a few options. SparkFun has a couple of hats that sit on top of the Raspberry Pi. Both have four STEMI QT ports. This one has four ports on the side, while this one has two on the top and two on the side. I actually prefer this shim. It leaves the rest of the Raspberry Pi's pins accessible. You just slide it over the pins in the end, and since you can daisy chain STEMI QT devices to one another, one STEMI QT port is all I need for most of my builds. Just make sure if you're buying any of these that you also buy as many STEMI QT cables as you'll need. STEMI QT cables don't come with the hats, shims, or devices. Now my students don't have any of these hats or shims, but they have been adding STEMI QT to Circuit Playground Bluefruit and Arduino Nano RP20s using a cable like this. It's got alligator clips on the ends of the four wires, and students also have pin socket jumper wires. So they can use the jumper wires to plug into the Pi, then clip the pins to the STEMI QT cable's alligator clips. Now there are also versions of STEMI QT cables that come with sockets on the end of them, so you can plug them directly into the Pi, or you can get a version with pins to plug into a breadboard if you want, so there's a wiring option for pretty much any setup you'd need. Now for my students and anyone else that doesn't have a hat or a shim and is wiring a STEMI QT port directly to the Pi, STEMI QT has four wires. Plug the red or power wire to the 3.3 volt pin, and if you're using the diagram on pinout XYZ, that's pin number one. You can also put the ground to any ground pin, but I'm using pin six here. And if you look at the Raspberry Pi pinout diagram, you'll see SDA is GPIO pin number two, or pin three on the pinout diagram. SDA is the blue wire, and SCL is GPIO pin 3, or pin 5 on the pinout diagram, SCL is the yellow wire. And that's it. This might be all you need for starters, but in the next video, I'll show how we can use CircuitPython and this ultra-cool STEMI QT 12-pad capacitive touch breakout board, the MPR121, to create a touch-sensing Raspberry Pi-based drum machine. And remember, you can find playlists for all sorts of related topics on my YouTube channel. These are all the videos that I use in the physical computing course that I teach at my university for students that are new to programming or electronics. Be sure to subscribe. New videos are posted all the time. And a like helps others find this content too. Thanks.